temple. This is another map where uh, this is a, the latter version of the map, I'm assuming. Yeah, well, I mean, people don't really edit Shatter Temple. Because without now, the, the close ground positions on this map aren't quite as bad as Metalopolis, but yeah, they're still what I would call unsuitable for StarCraft II. Well, I mean, it's not even quite as bad as like on Lost Temple with the changes they made to the map. Yeah. Um, so... And look at that, we are going to get close ground positions once again. I should fix their colors because they switched again because they're trolling me. <laughs> okay, so we do okay. see that uh, MC is going to be the blue protest over here at the three o'clock position on Shattered Temple. He's going to be up three to one over his opponent so far in this best of seven. So he needs one more game to win this series. And he definitely seems to have quite a bit of momentum on his side after those last two games. His opponent's going to be uh, Love CD. Uh, pretty good Chinese Protoss players, actually the brother of Sky. And uh, last hope for China. They came into these semi the semifinals with three Chinese players and MC. And it seemed like they were in a really good position to take home a win for China. But now he's in a really tough spot and really needs to make an epic comeback if he wants to get that win. I mean, there's always been sort of an esports rivalry between China and Korea. Korea, especially in StarCraft, loves to defend the fact that they're the best. In WarCraft, China always said that they were the best. And they always have these sorts of China vs. Korea events going on in like every game that they play. So this is a really, really big match for not only the players, but the countries and the fans. And MC seems to be on the verge of giving the win to Korea at the moment. Yeah, MC on match point right now, and he's actually going to see the probe coming out of Love CD's base, but it doesn't look like Love CD was paying attention to that, so he's going to scout all the way around the other side. No, he will see the probe go into his main base and immediately switch that probe back over and send it into the base of MC as he knows that the timing of that probe there is uh, indicative of the close ground positions. MC right now is going to try and do a little bit of probe harassment, get a little bit of damage done, and just be irritating in the base of Love City, whose gateway is just about to complete. And uh, immediately starting that Cybernetics court here. Once again, identical openings coming out of both of these players. Nothing too crazy quite yet. Yeah, they're both just going for the very most standard Protoss opening at this point. Haven't seen any variations. The main question is going to be, does either player go for that really fast gas? We saw MMC doing that a lot yesterday, but he's been going for aggressive openings so far in this series. He did go for a little bit more of a defensive opening on that last map, uh, but for most of this series, he's been taking the aggression to low CD, so he hasn't been taking that second gas quite as aggressively. Um, and then MC just completely makes it up by just going for the defensive, like, three gate, and then going for a pretty f delayed fourth gate. And uh, well, that's one of the things about those close ground spawns on metal. Counterattacks are so good with that short rush distance. He was able to make really good effective usage of that. Um, both players still in each other's bases with their probes that they're going to be leaving. And that means both players are now going to have the opportunity to start showing us what their plan is. As we see Love City dropping a second and third gateway bit of lag. Hopefully that goes away. And MC still hasn't dropped any extra gateways. He's going for a second assimilator. So looks like he's going to be doing another defensive build here on Shattered Temple. Yeah, and right now we've got a probe from Love City heading up to the 12 o'clock position of the map. And uh, MC actually did have vision of this probe on the tower. So if a proxy was to go down here, MC does have a little bit of information uh, to actually scout that out in the later stages of the game. But the probe is now idle. So we'll have to see if that's something that comes into play. A little bit later on. Love City only with three gateways right now. It's not out of the question for him to throw down maybe a Twilight Council out there. Uh, the probe is now moving around right now. I'm just really wondering if he's going to use this to throw down a proxy pylon and uh, use that for some extra war pins that come in from some different angles, or if he's actually going to use this for a proxy. Uh, as uh, right now we do see MC moving out right now. Love CD does see this and realizes that he has to move back to a more defensive position, and MC is not going to try his luck here. Uh, so attacking into the high ground there would mean that Love CD will have a few extra shots. And at this point in the game, I'm um, pretty sure that MC is aware of the fact that both players should have a relatively even army. As wow. You see, uh, both players dropping their Twilight Council exactly the same time. Look at the time yeah. of that. Like, their health on their Twilight Council is like five, maybe even four apart. Those are quite literally like at the same time. Yeah. 
And right now, Lefty is going to try and do a little bit of damage to uh, MC right now. He needs to get out of there. He's got significantly less units than MC. Like, MC, yeah. like, he could have actually let him get up the ramp and then force field some of those units in for a free kill. And if that had happened, then MC would have been in a really good position to actually just counterattack. Yeah, but the problem with that is, of course, MC doesn't know if there's more units waiting down there at the bottom. Uh, and it could be a little bit of a risky read this. MC is just going to go for the safer play. Proxy Pylon now for Love City is going to go down behind the LOS blockers there to allow him to get a little bit more reinforcements. That does look like oh, Love City no. is going to be the one to take the initiative here with Dark his blink upgrade Templars. halfway down. Dark, yeah, there Dark we go. Dark the Shrine. MC. I mean, so MC is going to be playing the defensive game. Yeah, I was looking at that, and it's like the blink is almost done for Love City, but MC hasn't started his yet. He's almost at 250 gas, and he does go for the Dark Shrine. Oh my god, look at this by MC with the great oh, force wow. fields, completely trapping in the units of Love City Huge right there directly field. on top of the Zealots. At, like, Love City at this point, taking that many losses, might even GG before the, the Dark Templars are out. That was such a huge loss of units. MC, he's got that Dark Shrine on the way, but he's not even waiting for it after that really nice uh, control with those force fields. He's going straight for the counter attack. He picks off a sentry. That's another really big hit to Love City. And he's going to have significantly less force fields. There goes oh. the only force field. There's the GG. MC with the 4-1 victory. He's going to take it. The only nine Chinese in the tournament winning 4-1 in the tournament. Absolutely insane. MC... I mean, I was going to say that as soon as those force fields went down, the game was over because of the DTs, and then MC was like, no, you're wrong, I'm actually going to win it right now, and just walks <laughs> in and kills them. Wow. Absolutely incredible play. MC capitalizing on a golden opportunity where a lot of players in that situation would be like, I've got a Dark Shrine on the way, I just need to buy time. I killed some units, I'm going to fall back. MC's like, nope, you're done. Yeah, that was just completely epic by MC. Those force fields were perfect. And if you look at that, there was still a little bit of choppy lag going on. It was one thing I was worrying about was would they be able to control their units? And MC still drops them like a baller, like in the absolute perfect spot. I mean, those force fields were the farthest away they possibly could and still be tight. Those were absolutely perfect force fields. And he drops them exactly at the right time, trapping all those units right on top of his zealots as well. And even if Love City had somehow stuck in that, there were Dark Templars on the way with absolutely no detection. He had a plan for everything after that. Really well done by MC. Congratulations to him. He definitely deserves the first place. You can see he was really working on his PvP leading up to this. Because his play in both these days has been completely impressive. Yeah, I mean... Again, I have to go back to that game on Zelnaga Caverns. He made some really weird decisions that I have to say I wouldn't have expected anybody to make, and they worked out in his favor. So just all around, MC, an excellent StarCraft II player, an excellent psych psychological player, and, uh, yeah, definitely deserving of this first-place victory. Yeah, I'm trying to...